Good afternoon and welcome back to the Leadership Institute studios. I'm Kyle Bechet, Communications Manager here at the Leadership Institute and your host for today. Our topic for today's webinar is going to be on online advocacy and activism as tools for action. Our guest for this topic is Paul Van Remortel, who is the Senior Product Manager with Stand United. So we're excited to have him here. Uh, he has a great wealth of knowledge to share with us today about online tools and everything at our disposal. So Paul, thank you for joining us. It's great to be here, Kyle. Appreciate um, that very much. Yeah, so, but before we get into today's topic, I'd like to remind everyone, as usual, that this webinar is live. So you can have your questions asked and answered online by emailing us at live at leadershipinstitute.org. And you can join in today's conversation by using the hashtag LIWebinar. With that, Paul, tell us about this world of online tools and what's at our disposal. This is a very exciting time. And, and by the way, I'm excited to be here and, and talk mm -hmm. to people about um, you know, how we can use the, the digital tools that we have available um, really to create a movement and make a difference. Um, the, the, the tools we have, just the, the sort of digital world you know, in which we live, um, just presents so many opportunities. Um, you know, when I was uh, up on the hill uh, in, in the 90s, uh, the, you know, the, the big technology communicating with, uh, with Congress you know, was a fax machine. Um, it, it was letters, phone calls, and fax machines. And uh, we, we didn't even really process email back then, uh, and there were no big social networks. Uh, so we, what we want to do is talk a little bit about um, how we can leverage these tools. Uh, most of them are tools that, that people use every day. You know, mm -hmm. It can be Facebook, it can be email, and really the, the power of these tools right. to, to rally your supporters you know, right. around your issues. And these tools that you had in the 90s, what you talked about in the 90s, <laughs> and the tools that we now have available today, and I'm sure we're going to talk about some of them, this, these are tools to put pressure on members of Congress for the issues that many activists care about. Yeah, and Congress, but really uh, any decision maker. Sure. Um, you know, it could be a, a, a local issue. It could be a zoning board. It could be a school board. Um, you know, any you know, any sort of decision structure, mm -hmm. um, and we'll get into uh, in a few minutes, um, sort of how how these sort of influence and right. pressure points you know work, but. You know, that, that's sort of the, the government and the system we live under where it, it's, it's an interest group based system. And if you don't organize and make your voice heard, then someone else is going to. Um, your, your opponents are certainly going to. So, so that, that's what we you know, really want to em emphasize. And, and again, it's not just big federal policy issues. Um, you know, what we're talking about can be applied all the way down to you know, your, your community association. Right, so it's applicable for everybody, whatever form of politics you're working in. It, it is, and, and really you're just talking about influencing a, a decision-making process mm -hmm. and, and how you can do that. Cool, so, so let's, yeah, let's, get, great, let's talk about it. Great, great. Um, let's just take a step back for a moment um, and, and just talk about petitions. Um, you know, petitions um, have been around since governments have been around. Um, you know, even you know, even before democracies. Um, and you know, a petition is is a formal, you know, actually a, a process where uh, you know the, the people can you know redre redress a grievance, um, you know, with with their government. Um, and of course, it's in you know, it's in our First Amendment of our Constitution. Um, and you know, it's easy to sort of get lost in the you know their online petitions, mm -hmm. and and people you know are familiar with them, but you know don't lose sight of the fact that they can be a very powerful you know a, a formal process for communicating to your government. Um, you know, we've we've obviously you know modified how they work. We don't you know we don't have to go door to door mm -hmm. and you know with a piece of paper and a, and a pen. Right. Uh, but that's that's to to our advantage, really, because mm -hmm. we can we can organize quickly and much more efficiently. Uh, but so so the the petition. Some people might be thinking, well, you know, why a petition? Is it really, you know, is it why is that the vehicle that we want to talk about today? Sure. And it's because it's 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 entrenched. You know, in in our system, and, and it goes back throughout history. Right. So they're so nothing new. <laughs> nothing new, but Just we're but uh, but we're using it in a in a slightly different way. Right. Um, and obviously, it's gone beyond just 
speaking to your government, um, you know, you can petition you know, a corporation if you if you're opposed to their some of their policies, and so we see a lot of that as well. So um, it's 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 a you know it's it's a powerful tool, um, and we're you know we're updating it. Um, so let's jump ahead to back to what I mentioned earlier about how policy decisions are made. Um, now this is this is deliberately a complex uh, chart here, um, and that is meant to show that you are vying, you are competing with these different paths of influence. And as I alluded to earlier, I mean, we, we live in a, in a pluralistic society. And, and, and for those who are studying political science, you know, no, no pluralism, um, you're, you're going to have you know, different interest groups staking out their, uh, their issues, their, you know, their supporters. So this is just meant to show, uh, and I realize that some of the text here is a little small, um, this is just meant to show that you, you have to organize because you are up against uh, institutional uh, interest groups. Um, you know, whether it's um, you know, the, the grocery manufacturers or you know, the agriculture. Um, uh, for those of us around DC, we know there is literally an association for everything. So, the need, the need to organize, and, and, and that's what we're trying to illustrate here. So let's move ahead. Um, so we, we talked a little bit about the, the tools and, and how we can sort of modernize the, the, the petition. And really, what we're, what we're aiming for is, is just like a video can go viral. Um, you know, we want to we want to get this momentum and, and, and these supporters uh, behind a petition so that it, it in effect, goes viral. Um, now, there are, uh, there are some cons to the, the, the tools and the, the ability to organize and the, the ability to give everyone a voice on any issue. Um, you know, namely, you're, you're competing against a lot more voices. Uh, but on, on the flip side, you know, you, you can organize, you can compete, you can get louder. And so what, what we stress uh, with petitions is, you know, here's your vehicle, um, and you, you, can, you can be louder than your opponent. Mm -hmm. um, it, it takes commitment, it takes perseverance. But really, we're, we're talking about digital communications and, and really getting, getting your message out there and getting it to grow exponentially. Sure. So, um, so let's quickly go through uh, what we put together as our five steps um, to a grassroots campaign. Um, th these are, you know, these are very fundamental uh, steps, but they, you know, they're, each one is important. Um, and really, without all five of these, um, your your chances of success are much less. Um, and this may seem obvious, but but. Be passionate about your issue. Um, if you know if, if you're going to succeed, it's it's going to take effort, um, and so you know, take your passion, leverage it, mm -hmm. you know, ap apply it. Um, so when you're talking about being passionate about a, about a specific issue, are you talking about like maybe so, uh, how broad or narrow do you generally suggest for people to go? Because if you just have a petition saying big government sucks, that seems a little too broad. And then, you know, you could find any mm -hmm. number of examples about how to go narrow. Yeah, no, most definitely. Um, with petitions, you, you need a, a, a request, an, an action that, that's attainable. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can't just petition to, you know, stop big government. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, you know, it has to be something that the decision maker has within their power to, to achieve. And, and that it's important, um, really, when you're thinking about your, your cause, your issue, you need to be thinking you know, equally about who, who mm -hmm. are we targeting for the petition. Sure. Um, you know, are, is it a CEO? Is it a member of Congress? Is it the president? Is it, you know, is it your mayor? Um, and, and that requires a little bit of thought. It, it may not you know, be obvious right at the beginning you know, who, who's actually the right person to you know, to, to really affect the outcome of this issue. Um, and sometimes uh, it, there could be multiple decision makers, and your best bet is to maybe go the less obvious. You know, maybe, really, if you're trying to get to the mayor, you know, maybe you go to city council first. 
um, and and build up some support there. And of course, the same would go with Congress. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so that the really the issue and and the target or the decision maker really go hand in hand. Um, so, so the second step here, uh, which we've just touched on, uh, and and when this, we really have to emphasize this: um, the, the the decision maker you know, has to be able to take the action to achieve the action that you're asking. Um, so, the the third step, um, you know, you. You want to give some thought to how you frame your petition and sort of how you're asking. Um, your instinct may be to vent a little bit, to you know, sort of be a little negative. Mm -hmm. You know, be respectful. Um, certainly know what you're talking about. You know, know the facts. Um, know what the counter arguments are. Um, but at the same time, you know, you want to you want to be concise. Um, and you, you, know, you want to spell it out you know, fairly simply so that someone who hasn't heard about your issue, hasn't you know, heard about your petition, they can see it, they can identify with it. Um, you know, if you can tell a personal story, um, that's, that goes a long way. Um, you know, who, who's being affected by this issue? And, and you, you want to make, make a change. You want to you bring about um, you know, so, some resolution or, or a fix, who's, who's being hurt, who's, who's suffering? And that, that can go a long way. You know, it's, it's essentially, it's, it's empathy, um, but it also, you know, puts a human face on. Uh, right. And you earlier mentioned, you know, there's a tendency to be negative in this. Do you find that, that one is more effective than the other, negativity or po being positive? Like, instead of saying, I want you to stop this, saying I want you to do something in a more positive manner? It, it's gonna depend a little bit on the issue. Sure. Um, I mean, if you're, if you're just flat out opposed to a, a, a bill mm -hmm. or a policy, um, you know, it's fine to say you know, do not approve or, or yeah. pass or, or you know, this, this proposal, um, and, and here's why. Um, just don't be, you know, name calling and you know ad hominem attacks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, be respectful, sure. and and you'll you'll find that in the decision making process, your arguments will go farther. And you know, for most people, that's intuitive. I mean, just day in and day out, typically you Naturally. get more get more done. You mm -hmm. you can resolve conflict if you're if you're not always too aggressive. <laughs> um, and then sort of the second part of, of step three here is, um, you know, share. You know, sh get your your sort of immediate network, immediate circle, mm -hmm. you know, you know, involved, and and we'll we'll get in more into into sharing and everything in just a second. Um, so the 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 fourth step here, um, this is this is really important, um, and this goes beyond just the petition itself, but use use the media. Um, there are a lot of different ways to do this. Um, you know. The first thing, obviously, is alert them you know, to the issue and let them know that you have uh, created the petition. Um, also, let the, the target, the decision maker, the person you're petitioning, let them know about the petition and see if they'll respond. And depending on how they respond, you can let the media know. You can say, well, yeah, um, Council Member Smith, you know, he told us to go, you know, to go you know, take a hike. Um, that could go into a sort of media narrative, um, and and that could be you know that could be noteworthy because now you have the decision maker who has who has actually responded. So um, you know it, it could be just the local newspaper, um, radio. If you can get a story written about the petition, then you know, other people see it. It you know it can mm. grow. Um, Generates interest. It does, and you know. Your your issue it, it may be out there, but there's there's sort of no hook for the media to write a story on it. Along comes a petition. So here you have hundreds or maybe thousands of citizens mm -hmm. um, who are now who have a formal you know movement, and, and that's you know that's newsworthy. So you know a lot of a lot of the uh, especially the local uh, press will will pick up on that and will will write a story about it. Um, and then when, when you're ready to deliver the petition, um, you, you call a press conference. Mm -hmm. um, call, contact local media and say, hey, we're, there's a city council vote coming up. We're gonna show up with our petition. 
with, you know, with printouts with all the names of the signatures, um, all the names of the signers, and, and we're actually going to deliver it. Um, you know, people tend to be sort of intimidated about like getting like in front of the media or or the thought maybe of calling your own press conference. There's no reason to be intimidated. Um, you you know if you've come to the point where you're starting a petition and you're getting organized, you know by all means um, you know use as as many different channels outlets as you can uh, to to get publicity around it. So it sounds like activists should be thinking that petitions are not just a vehicle to affect change within the decision-making tree. It's also a tool for you to bring more attention to yourself and what you believe in. Yeah, that's that's sort of a, a, an important like a corollary or, right. or side effect. Right. Um, because a lot of issues, as we all know, play out sort of in the court of public opinion. Mm -hmm. And when you, know, when you start airing um, you know, the arguments on both sides, you, know, you, you can really you, know, you can really start to shape the debate. Mm -hmm. And keep in mind the decision maker, especially if they are elected or appointed officials, if, if they're officials, um, you know, they, they read the papers, they, they know exactly what's going on mm -hmm. in the media, and that, that is another pressure point. Um, and so we can't emphasize that enough. Um, you know, definitely you know, use the media you know, as, as much as you can. So, um, you know, number five here, you, you will, Hit some roadblocks along the way, um, but y y you have to you have to persevere. You know, you may start a petition and you know it, it starts out great, um, you know, hundreds or maybe thousands of signatures. Um, the story sort of starts to die down a little bit. And maybe your signature count comes down. You know, that's the time when you need to think maybe even outside the box a little bit. It's like, okay, what can we do to sort of rekindle, you know, interest in this issue? Um, you know, that may be where you contact the press again. Mm -hmm. uh, that may be where you go to the decision maker and ask them like for an update on the issue. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there's no limit to, to what you can do to, to you know, try to keep, you know, the, the whole process mm -hmm. moving along. So it's, it's, uh, it, you know, it's a matter of you know, being creative. Mm -hmm. Um, and just you know, keeping the pressure on. Cool. So let's jump ahead. Um, and so we, we, we talked a little bit about, about pitching uh, to the media. Um, and you know, we, we see more and more articles, just even in the last couple of years, um, where pretty much the, the, the entire scope of the article is you know, there is a petition on this issue. And, we we are seeing um, more and more writers who who will just cover new petitions on a regular basis. So you know again to emphasize this the they the, the media that is they really will will take the petition as a hook, and and will you know will run with the story. When you're pitching the media, do you tell them when you've started the petition, or do you wait until? You, I mean, it's got to be a little gamesmanship involved. Right. Wait until you have your first 2,500 signatures, depending on the right. scale of the petition you're trying right. to accomplish. Yeah, great question. Um, you know, we would advise um, getting a little bit of support behind the, the petition first. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's going to make for a stronger story. Um, you know, maybe you have um, some, some milestones. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe your ultimate goal for a local issue, maybe it's 1,000 signatures. So maybe, you know, when you're at 500, um, that's a pretty good, pretty good milestone. Um, you know, you, you could go to the media and say, look, we're halfway to our signature goal. Mm -hmm. And, you know, can, can we update you as we go? Can we update you when we get to 1,000? Uh, but it, I mean, it's always good to show that, that initial support for the petition right. when, when you're pitching. Mm -hmm. It's more than so. just one person getting ready to sig circle a petition or something like that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So just, I mean, really to, to, to emphasize using the media, um, it's, you know, it's, it's really important and can really, um, can really put pressure on the decision maker. Um, so uh, getting back to the, the types of issues, um, you know, whether it's federal, state, local, hyperlocal, um, you know, a, a petition on a, a smaller local issue um, can really strongly influence, can win an issue with a couple hundred signatures. Um, so you, you're, it's like your power of the petition you know, is, is magnified. 
Um, it's, it can be easier to organize um, you know, a, a smaller group as well. So you know, if, if you're thinking about petitions, you know, it, there may be some big national issues. Uh, but you know, keep in mind it's it, you know it's it's good for smaller issues as well. You know, the, back to the chart I showed earlier, those 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 pressure points to decision makers um, on a on a on a local you know state level. Um, you know, those those are all magnified. So you know, don't don't think oh my issue is too small for a for a, a petition based um, grassroots campaign. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it probably all matters what kind of decision making body you want to get your signature in front of. If right. you're trying to get it in front of a small town select board, it's probably, you know, uh, even the smaller issues about crosswalks right. the, uh, matter just as much. Yeah, most definitely, most definitely. And, you know, in, in one of the main reasons we started Stand United is the left has been better at petition-based organizing. Than, than the right has, mm -hmm. and you know we saw really a, a void, um, you know, in that area. Um, you know, a, a change.org, you know, 100 million members. Um, you know, they they tend to dominate when when they take a stand on on, on an issue. When they take their side, you know, they they tend to drown out folks on the other side. Right. And so we you know, we, we we think it's important to to. Talk to people, mm -hmm. you know, not just about petitions, but about you know how to organize. It, I mean, it could be, it could be through some other vehicle, mm -hmm. um, but you know, petitions are certainly you know very effective at that. Yeah. And we're and we're trying to level the playing field. Right. And as you mentioned earlier about media picking up these a lot more, I think you know you go on to any of these major news outlets online, and a lot of times like you hear more from you know the other side than right. than you do from any of conservatives perspectives or things right. like that yeah and and back to the media I mean the, the let's face it the, the mainstream media they 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 will tend to give a change.org petition greater run than sure. yeah, that, than it's than it's conservative counterpart right so you know you you sort of have I mean there is there is a bias and, mm -hmm. and they, you know they even admit it so this is right. nothing new but, um, you know we we, we we need to try to get around their filter, right? And and that's you know that's another great thing about the petitions. I mean, if you if you have an issue and there's a change.org petition with you know twenty thousand people, if you could say, well, we have one on Stand United with fifty thousand, you know, that can really swing the pendulum, mm -hmm. um, and that you know that can really show, and you know the, the, the culture wars, mm -hmm. you know, you 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 tend to get drowned out. Because the mainstream media is is sort of giving, you know, sort of giving a a, 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 you know, a, a right. special <laughs> a place in their in their articles for for the other side. Yeah, and so. it seems to help give context to the issue a little bit more, so right. that it's, it, it helps you know people who are more friendly to your cause make right. the argument as well. Right, and if and if conservatives don't know that there's a, a counterpoint that there mm -hmm. is a countervailing force, right. you know, on this issue, then then they're not going to be heard, mm -hmm. and the decision maker and the media they're they're, they're, they're going to the wrong thing. Well, then they're going to think, well, see, we have all these change.org supporters over here, mm -hmm. and so, you know, we must be right on the issue, right? And and so that you know, we think we think that's important that that we that we level that playing field. Sure. So. Um, so I mean, I'm more than happy to take questions. Um, Sure. Yeah, we have a few questions from our audience that came in while you were talking, and I right. kind of held them to the end a little bit. Um, one of our listeners, Carl, wants to, uh, wants your thoughts on the styles of the current candidates and PACs and how they're using petitions, if at all, and what uh, maybe go into a little bit how they've been effective or ineffective in using them. Right. Yeah. So, so the the political campaigns um, petitions have been around for a while for both the campaigns and the the national parties. Mm -hmm. Um, well, state as well, um, to uh, yeah, basically to connect with their supporters. Um, a lot of that is is fundraising driven. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's what political campaigns do. You know, they they raise money, uh, but they're they're you know they're very effective. I mean, the the people who are inclined to to give money to a party or a candidate, they'll do that. Um, those who just want to lend support, um, you know, maybe knock on doors, make phone calls, um, you know, yard signs, bumper stickers, whatever. 
um, you know, that, that's it's a great way to to you know find your supporters, uh, sort of on an issue by issue basis. So, um, a, a petition by a, by a political candidate, you know, is typically going to be on an issue. You know, it might be Second Amendment, you know, pro Second Amendment, um, you know, whatever it is, and so then they can connect with people who you know share their views on that issue. Um, but it, it's it's definitely effective for for the for the political parties. Uh, you know, to, to find to go find supporters. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, two questions came in about more resource mm -hmm. uh, oriented questions. Uh, Renee would like to know where can people find some of the information you gave in your PowerPoint, specifically the charts that you used and things like that for later. Okay. Um, I mean, I'd be happy to. We can share, um, you know, any of the materials here, mm -hmm. um, and we can make them available through Leadership Institute. Yep, or, you know, I'm more than happy um, to connect with with anyone offline, mm -hmm. um, and you know, email me. Um, you can you can reach us at info uh, at standunited.org. Um, I'll be more than happy to provide you know any information I can. Um, sure. So. Uh, and then the second question came from Alex, and they, they want to, uh, he is so interested in this topic, he would like to know more about how he could become professionally involved in this and who he would talk to about something like that. So any advice you could give? We're, we're always looking for, uh, for good petition campaigners. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, c contact me. Um, you know, I'd be more than happy to um, you know, steer you in the right direction. Um, obviously, Leadership Institute, that's what you guys do. Yeah. Um, so I'd highly recommend you know following up with Leadership Institute. Right. Um, if, if our conservative you know, jobs it, website is happy to help. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, there are volunteer opportunities mm -hmm. um, all the time, and so if if you are looking at, at uh, you know a career in in political activism advocacy, and you haven't and you haven't done much, you know start out volunteering. Sure. Um, the political campaign is good. Um, or really any, you know, sort of any advocacy type organization, but volunteer, get some experience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe you want to try to like, like work up in, in Congress and sort of learn the legislative process. Mm -hmm. um, but there, there are a lot of resources. Um, and so I would say start with Leadership Institute. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we didn't pay you to say that today. <laughs> so. Uh, so we talked a lot about in this webinar about what, what you do once you have a petition going. How, how do you suggest to people about one, the most effective way to put together a petition for, in the beginning? And, to, and then two, how do you get people other than your friends and family involved in your petition? Right. Um, what mm -hmm. suggestions do you have for people on, right. this, on that? So on Stand United, the, actually creating the petition is takes like five minutes. I mean, it's very easy. You know, you enter your text and and you know, basically fill in some fields. But the a little bit of work obviously needs to go into what what you're going to put in there yeah. exactly. So, you know, as we talked about earlier, you know, make sure that your your arguments are sound. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you can if you can put a, a, a human story around the issue. Um, it, but be concise at the same time. You know, don't don't do like a five-page uh, <laughs> petition, which most people are not going to read. Right. Um, and and a, a powerful image or video. So the on Stand United, you can either put just a, a still photo or you can do a video. Um, video is is great. Mm -hmm. Do you find um, they're it, more effective than still um, pictures? They 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 will be more effective mm -hmm. uh, because you can you you can use imagery in a more powerful way, right? I mean, right. video tends to be more powerful than just a still. Um, so, but yeah, so put, you know, put some thought into, you know, how you want to approach this issue. And then as far as sharing it, um, yeah, I mean, just start out, you know, re reaching out to, you know, your, your immediate circle. Mm -hmm. You know, who do you know who, you know, is going to be impacted by this? And then on Stand United, it's very easy, you know, share on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So it's like a one button, you know, share on Twitter. Um, uh, you know, it's easy to email it out. And, you know, do that on a regular basis, um, you know, to sort of keep the issue moving as your issue is updated, maybe as you hit mm -hmm. a signature milestone or you get a, a news story. Right. Update so people who have signed your your petition give them an update. Say, oh yeah, today uh, you know, we got an article in the local paper, mm -hmm. um, and you can drop a link into it and, and share with them. 
And Facebook obviously is very powerful. Right. So, so I mean, you, you, can do something, you could do something as simple as day one, share on Facebook, hey, we got our first 50, 50 mm -hmm. signatures. Will you be one of our next 25 or something yep. like that? And then maybe a few days later, days later, you say something like, did you see what happened today? Sign yeah. our petition. For sure. Something like. For sure. If, if there's a deadline around your petition, mm -hmm. like a vote. Yeah, 24 uh, or, hours. Into, yeah. Then, then you want to use the deadline you know, as to create urgency. Sure. So you know, there's build up. Mm -hmm. So okay, you know, the vote is in seven days. Mm -hmm. um, we really need your support, and try to get your your supporters to share. So then you 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 can you know you get the network sure. effect, and and you can get it to grow exponentially. Mm -hmm. You mentioned a little bit throughout your presentation that stories make things more powerful. So what are some sure. stories f in your experience of effective petitions that you've seen really nail it? And affect yeah. some change. I mean, there there are several. I mean, you know, we had the petition on the uh, on the Confederate War Memorial in Portsmouth, Virginia, and you know, people commenting on on relatives of theirs who were in you know, cemeteries. Mm -hmm. um, it, it touched them personally. Um, you know, we've had it's interesting. We've had high schoolers create various petitions. You know, some <laughs> on like creating a dance, and then some um, on you know, like, like you know, senior parking preferences and um, and it's great to see you know younger you know young young people you know be, be active as well um, there there's a there's a uh, in North Carolina a, a veteran uh, who was in need of some mental health care and there's the story behind you know him and and he's actually incarcerated mm -hmm. um, and he just hasn't been able to get the the mental health care that he needs that's you know that sort of just hits you right here right um, so really, I mean, any issue, there's a personal angle to it and try to, try to tell that story. Mm -hmm. Sure. So. Um, a couple more questions coming through, so sure. I'll, read, I'll read some off and you can give us your answer. Uh, Joseph would like to know, how does one go about finding people to support the petitions? Um, yeah, no, that's a great question. I mean, you know, Facebook will help, but you know, that may only go so far. Um, you know, one thing we advise, uh, there, are, there may be community groups. There may be, um, there may be an association, um, you know, depending on what the issue is. There are, there, there are groups of people who are going to be affected by the issue. And there are a couple of different ways you know, to, 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 to sort of go find them. I mean, you, you, can, you can do research online. Mm -hmm. um, you know, research your issue. See, what other groups are you know are affected? Mm -hmm. um, you know most of the big associations you know, will have state and local chapters. Mm -hmm. um, so, so you know go to your go to your community leaders, uh, your church, um, you know your Boy Scout troop, your your sports teams. Right. I mean not that you know not that you want to you know, you know pol politicize everything, but if you're you know, if you fit your kid's sporting event and you're talking to people, hey, you know, did did you know about this issue? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there's still word of mouth. We love digital tools, but word of mouth still works. Mm -hmm. And then when you do your research, you probably find new, when you find those new people, you find a way to give them context of how it affects their lives personally or sure. and give it a more personal touch to it. Yeah, most, well. most definitely. Sure. Yeah. Um, another question from one of our audience members. Uh, so they, Gail would like to know, do you have specific do you have a specific example of an effective conservative petition effort that we can study? So maybe do you have any resources on Stand United or know of other places where they can go yeah. on and just yeah, I mean, analyze they, it a little bit? Yeah, I mean, there, we, have, we have over 1,000 petitions up on Stand United. Um, I mean, pro-Second Amendment. Um, you know, one of our most popular petitions is term limits for Congress. It was just started by a woman, you know, started with a couple hundred signatures and mm -hmm. now I think has exceeded 30,000. Um, I mean, if you're, looking, if you're looking for conservative issues, definitely go check out, um, go check out the site, see some of the issues that are up there. Um, we're, we have a section for, for what we call victories. Um, you know, Hillary Clinton ha being forced to turn over her email server. Um, so we, you know, obviously some issues will be affected by multiple, you know, pressure points. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I mean, you can you can see what types of petitions people have started, and you know, and we're adding you know, we're adding not just you know, new petitions every day, but we're mm -hmm. we're we're getting more victories as well. Right. Um, so the, the information's up there, um, and you know, again, you could do some online research, um, 
And if you don't see the uh, uh, existing petition on an issue that, that you really care about, go create a petition. Mm -hmm. And then you can sort of create your own case sure. study. So you mentioned victories, but what are some of the pitfalls that you have noticed out there where people could have done something differently and maybe changed the petition yeah. a little bit to make it better? Yeah, I mean, we, we have seen some that are a great issue, but they're, they're frankly just not written as clearly mm -hmm. as, you know, as they could be. Um, you know, some of our petitions just don't have the image, um, and we, you know, we really encourage use of image or video. Um, so there are those sort of more technical things, um, and really we're, we're pushing Stand United petition creators to go to the media. We, mm -hmm. we um, really, we'd like to see more, um, you know, more press involvement mm -hmm. because uh, as we've covered, um, th that really goes a long way. So we, we, we would like to see like, more, you know, more of that. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's going to that's gonna really improve the chances of, of your, your petition success. So the media is your friend in this. It, it, it is in this case. Um, with the more technical stuff, do you guys offer support you know, online when people are going to create stuff? Can we, they, we do. Yeah, yeah, we do. So we have a, we have a whole sort of help section. You know, so once you've you know, created your petition, but maybe before you've actually published it, Mm -hmm. um, there, there are all the, 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 the tips and tricks, but then we also have a, a an online help desk. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you need help with anything, you know, you just, you just basically send us a note through our, through our little help desk. Mm -hmm. so. Um, and then, so I have one final question for you. We'll see while you're answering that final question, if any more come in, Sure. if not, I'll give you the final word after that. Um, so finding the me uh, getting the media's attention isn't yeah, easy especially right. for you know new political activists or even some old political activists that that uh, experienced political activists not old uh, that Experience. yeah um, what how do you suggest people going and finding out a who to contact and be getting their attention as best right. as possible I mean if, if it's more of a local issue um, you know you, it's easier to reach a local reporter, mm -hmm. and and you know if they if they have a local beat, um, ch chances are they're 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 gonna you know they're gonna have some interest in this. Um, but make sure that they cover the the issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't don't go to like the you know the crime reporter or the you know, technology <laughs> reporter if your issue is about something totally different. Right. So so you know, do a little bit of research. You know who, mm -hmm. which writer, which reporter right. you know would be inclined to write this, and and. You know, literally, you know, email them, and their contact information is like right there on the on the website. On the website, and yeah. so you can Could send you them also an email. Call, just call them up and be like, for sure, and ask who covers X issue. They still use phones. Yeah. Reporters still use phones, um, and 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 mo most definitely, um, do, yeah, do that. Um, do do all of the above until you know until they get back to you. Um, and, and but you know, you 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 need you need to you know, tell tell the the story of the petition in a compelling way as well. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, that's all the questions we have for today. Okay. So I'll give you, you know, the final word on petitions and how this can be effective for people. It's, it's such an exciting time um, with, with all, of the, all of the digital mm -hmm. uh, tools we have at, uh, at our disposal. Um, and you know, it, it's like time to get off the sidelines. Mm -hmm. um, really, there's, there's no excuse for, you know, just sitting around and saying, oh, you know, I, I really have to do something about this issue. Like, you know, what can I do? You know, now you 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 really you really know, you know what you can do to uh, you know to, to to make a difference. Um, you know, don't get discouraged. Um, you know, stay at it. Um, but you know, you you see petitions have success. You know, li literally every day, mm -hmm. and you 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 have to you you jump in. Don't be intimidated. Um, and, and, you know, just go, go get, do get it. Involved. Go do it. Go get Perfect. involved. You know, take a stand. Yeah. Make an impact. Well, Paul, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. And if I'm not mistaken, you have a blog up on our website right now. I think it's the second or third one currently. And blog that, post. Yeah, yeah. And that details uh -huh. almost everything we talked about today. So yeah. if they're looking yeah. for further information. Yeah. Check it out and, mm -hmm. and uh, go to Stand United and, and reach out to us. Sure. Yeah, if, we can, uh, if we can do anything for you. Yeah, great. Well, thank, thank you again you. for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and thank you all for tuning in today. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of this broadcast, uh, today's webinar was live 
but it's also been recorded. So you can also check this video out later online. And you do that by going to leadershipinstitute.org slash activism on demand. Our next webinar uh, will be in about two weeks on Wednesday, May 11th. Uh, stay tuned uh, for more details. Check your inbox. I'm fairly certain you'll be getting an email about that soon. Um, thank you again for tuning in. Uh, have a good night. determines political success. That's why Martin Blackwell created the Leadership Institute to train and equip conservative activists with the best tools available. Located in Arlington, Virginia, across the street from the Clarendon Metro Station, LI is metro accessible from both Reagan National Airport and Dulles International Airport. Public and overnight parking garages are also located nearby. If you requested housing during your training, check in with the security guard in the lobby after 5 p.m. Not all trainees offer housing. Guests staying at LI in the Dudley and Phyllis Whitman dormitories are to follow the instructions and the codes of conduct outlined in the dormitory contract. Students staying in the dorms have access to showers and basic amenities. At the start of the training, an LI representative will greet you and confirm your registration. Trainings are taught by a prominent network of volunteer faculty, all of whom are experts in their field. LI offers 44 different types of trainings, including classes in campaign management, communications, fundraising, and campus activism. Media classes are taught in the Sacker Multimedia Center on the fourth floor. In our studios, you will learn top-notch skills for public appearances. Join the Leadership Institute's growing network of conservative Everything LI does is made possible through the generosity of our donors. Click this link to